Um, we also do, you know, full gynecological care in terms of well women's exams, pap smears, contraceptive counseling. Uh, if your pap smear comes back abnormal and you have that little virus everybody knows about now called the human papillomavirus, HPV, we are the best trained physicians to treat that virus because we have antiviral herbs. We can eradicate that virus and now your pap smear is normal. Menopause. Naturopathic physicians are excellent at treating menopause, either using bioidentical hormonal therapy or herbal medicines. We are excellent at balancing a woman's hormonal system. And then disease prevention. And this is where the men need to be you know, paying attention to, is disease prevention. Uh, specifically for women, you know, we think of breast cancer, heart disease, and osteoporosis are kind of the three biggie in terms of disease prevention. You might not have an obvious sign that you have osteoporosis, but it's important to prevent that disease because oftentimes that takes a uh, independently living, healthy senior, and she, you know, accidentally slips or trips, or the cat runs in front of her and she falls. And if she has thin bones, she's going to break a hip, and now that might put her on the road of not being so healthy or independently living. Okay, next slide. So, what are some naturopathic treatments? You've heard a lot already about food allergy testing and environmental approach. You know, really naturopathic treatments for all conditions involve diet, nutrition, lifestyle changes. I say to every patient who walks in the door, you can't go to a naturopath and not have your diet or nutrition addressed. Whether you don't want to know what you're allergic to or you don't want to change your diet, it is the key to health, no matter what condition you have. Botanical medicine, hydrotherapy, which is using water to help heal the body. Homeopathy, we use different nutrients. Sometimes we take them orally, sometimes we give them intravenously, especially in oncology care or detoxification or those viruses. I mean, I have a patient who have a standing order for IV therapy. The minute they get that little sign of the cold and flu and they don't have time to be sick or they gotta get on a plane to go on a trip, they come and get a high dose vitamin C drip and then boom, they're, they're healthy. And then we do prescribe some medications, and then occasionally we do some surgeries. You've been thinking, oh, naturopaths do surgeries? We do surgeries sometimes to help with diagnosing. So in the area of women's health, and for those of you prospective students who didn't know this, we actually do some biopsies in the realm of gynecology, vulvar biopsies, endometrial biopsies, or biopsies after um, an abnormal pap smear. And so these are all the things that you, know, you can expect. So I want to just focus, kind of give you some little take home points. When it comes to a woman's hormonal system, it depends how old she is, right? Is she reproductive age, experiencing PMS? Is she kind of, oh, uh, maybe in her 40s, having symptoms of perimenopause, or is she now in menopause? So a lot of times, patients will come to me and I'll say, you know, are you having any PMS symptoms? What happens that week before your menstrual cycle? Oh no, I'm fine. And then the husband, the boyfriend, the mother, the daughter say, oh, they have PMS. Oh, do they ever. They have PMS. They have boob changes. They have bloating. They have breast tenderness. They swell up. They have pain. They can't sleep. They're, they crave chocolate. What's up with that? Craving chocolate. Now, these are real hormonal changes that take place uh, usually about one week before the menstrual cycle. It affects a lot of women. Naturopathically, when we start with diet, there are simple dietary changes you can make to balance your hormones and actually stop PMS. These are some of the simplest things. You have to know what your food allergies are. Make sure you're not eating food allergy. Eliminate sugar. That would probably should be number one. Eliminate sugar and carbohydrates, which is the hardest thing to do, right? But try it for a while. If you're a woman who has PMS, go two menstrual cycles without any sugar, and even that one simple change, you'll have less PMS symptoms. Also, your sodium intake and caffeine and alcohol because they <coughs> retain fluid. And you know, sometimes you can like bloat up a week before your menses. Go two menstrual cycles without caffeine, alcohol, and a lot of salt, and you'll see you'll have less bloat. Mm -hmm. Exercise, exercise, and more exercise, right? You can't hear enough about exercise. Even just 30 minutes a day, three times a week can decrease PMS symptoms. 
And then, of course, there's some botanical remedies that we use. These are the most common herbs that we use for PMS that work really well. Vitex, it's also called chase tree. Angelica, Diasporia, Taraxicum, Ruthenia, and Hypericum. I like to use both a combination of the whole plant and the standardized extract. And sometimes these can just be in small amounts or you mix these all in one formula and you can take it either in a pill or in a liquid. And boom, her PMS is gone. And then also for PMS, there are nutrients that have been found to be low in women. Because not every woman has PMS, right? Some do, some don't. We have found that some women with PMS are low in B6 or vitamin E or magnesium. Maybe they need a little chromium to help stop those sugar cravings or the barrage oil to stop the breast tenderness and the water retention. Or a little 5-hydroxy tryptophan, which dips. Serotonin dips, you know that neurotransmitter that makes you happy? It drops the week before the menstrual cycle, and 5-hydroxytryptophan increases it. Then as a woman gets older, now she's not so concerned about PMS, right? Maybe, okay, she suffered through those reproductive years, and now she's at the nature path, right? And now she, she's in this perimenopause phase. It's not yet menopause, it's pre perimenopause. And this can happen anywhere between age 45 and up, and it can last four to five years until she goes into menopause. And this is that period of time where the menstrual cycles become a little bit irregular. Either they spread out, or she, there's too many of them. I call it the roller coaster. I say, oh, strap in, you are on the roller coaster. <laughs> Unless you intervene with naturopathic medicine. What are some of the symptoms of perimenopause? When you look at this list, probably everybody in this room and if you're a man, you can identify the women in your life who might have these symptoms. Now, granted, during this time, there are some other conditions that can cause some irregular bleeding patterns, like fibroids or endometriosis and ovarian cysts. So those definitely need to be ruled out. But if it's just a hormonal imbalance, there are things that can be done naturopathically to help control the irregular menses during this process to help think about, okay, if she's moving into menopause, we need to work on prevention, osteoporosis prevention, breast cancer prevention, heart disease prevention. When it comes to treatment during the perimenopause phase, we want to treat, okay, what is happening? What is the priority? Is she having crazy irregular bleeding patterns and now she's anemic? We need to regulate those menstrual cycles. Or is it more just some of those uh, mood changes or maybe she's starting to have hot flashes and night sweats, but she's still having menstrual cycles. And she's like, oh, well, I'm not menopausal, but I'm having hot flashes and night sweats. We can intervene with herbal medicines, diet, nutritional changes, and even bioidentical hormone therapy. Who's heard about bioidentical hormones? See, a lot of people have. Yeah, these can be very useful uh, during this time. Next slide. Now, once she goes an entire year without any menstrual bleeding whatsoever, then she's in menopause. So any time that there's bleeding for, you know, anywhere or spotting, anywhere in there that previous year, she's not in menopause yet. You have to technically, the definition is one year without any menstrual cycle. But you can start having those crazy symptoms at any point. Once you go a year without a menstrual cycle and you're postmenopausal, then you can start to have a whole new group of symptoms hot flashes, vaginal dryness, which can cause low libido, mood changes, dry skin, dry hair. Depression is a big problem during this time period. Joint pain. Joint pain is like the little secret symptom of menopause that women don't know about. And they think it's just early arthritis. It's not. It's no estrogen. It's not having your ovaries produce estrogen anymore. And then, of course, all these things can affect your sleep. And when you don't sleep, now you're even more crabby, right? So there's more mood changes when you don't sleep. So what are some of the uh, uh, treatments that a naturopathic doctor might do for menopause? Again, the bioidentical hormone therapy can be very safe and effective. Diet and nutritional changes. One of the biggest things to do is to increase the dietary consumption of ground up flax seeds. There's something in flax seeds called lignin. And lignans is actually a form of an isoflavone that can stop hot flashes and night sweats. So that's pretty cool, just a simple dietary change. 
decreasing stress. Women who have stress in their life or tend to be a little bit more type A, a little bit more anxious, have more hot flashes. Other dietary changes. If you are in menopause and having hot flashes, you don't want to be eating a lot of hot, spicy foods, right? Or drinking a lot of alcohol, especially red wine. That can make hot flashes worse. And then there's homeopathic remedies, nutritional supplements, and botanical medicines. Next slide. Dr. Crinian touched on this briefly, and so I'll just mention I always evaluate my patient for her environmental exposures to environmental estrogens. Why? Because these affect a woman no matter if she's in her teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, or menopausal or above. These chemicals in our food, air, water, cosmetics, cleaning products changes a woman's estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone and can cause a lot of hormonal conditions that we see in women. Infertility, PCOS, breast cancer, endometriosis, PMS, more menstrual bleeding than she should have. Uh, so he talked a lot about where these products are, for, are where these chemicals are in our products. I put up a, a few slides here of the list. This is the, the um, wild fish that are high in mercury. Because you think, you hear on the news, well, only eat wild fish, only eat wild fish. But some wild fish is really high in mercury. If you look at these, these are the large fatty fish. And they're eating up all the other little fish. They have more fat stores for the mercury to be stored in. So then you might think, okay, well, I'll just eat farm fish. But farm fish might not have the mercury, but it has PCBs and dioxins. And so knowing which fish uh, that are wild, that are low in mercury, would be the fish to eat. Now, Dr. Crinian had mentioned the pesticides that are on our fruits and vegetables just sitting in the store waiting to be sold. This is the list of the most contaminated conventional fruits and vegetables. These pesticides affect women's health. They change hormones in women. And so it's important that no matter what health condition you have as a woman, that your naturopathic doctor is addressing your environmental exposure. I'd say cosmetics and grooming products of all of these and plastics, plastic water bottles, plastic food storage containers, plastic clean wrap, those would be the main sources of exposure. Now Campbell's Soup, everyone know Campbell's Soup, right? Chicken noodle soup. They have just agreed to pull a chemical out of their canned food called bisphenol A. This is really big news because they're one of the largest canned food makers in the United States. And and they finally bowed to consumer pressure. There was this big letter writing campaign that went on. And they are going to pull this chemical bisphenol A out. And thank goodness, because at the same time, our government in the United States just decided there isn't enough information on bisphenol A to ban it in this country. That just happened this week. I don't know if anyone's aware of that or not. But there is enough information. That's what I got to say. All right, well, that's fine. So a lot of this I outlined in, in my book, which uh, you'll have the opportunity to look through if you want, in terms of health conditions linked to these environmental chemicals, different naturopathic approaches to women's health conditions. This slide. But basically, when you think about naturopathic women's health, you think about a comprehensive, integrative approach to not only treating what current disease you might have, but also preventing any future health conditions, and really balancing the whole body. Because you can't just compartmentalize the body. There really is a connection between mind-body and the whole body. What's happening at the thyroid affects the uterus, which affects the adrenals, which affects our emotional well-being. The entire body is connected. And that's why I really think naturopathic physicians, I'll say it again, are the best trained physicians in, in the country. And so whether you're here as a prospective student or a prospective patient, you are at the right campus.